friends, so it's time for an update. I haven't done one in a while. So here is my volunteer board. Like I say, it just, the little seeds fall out of the blossom right there. See the black stuff? That's the seed. And it just falls off and it just reseeds itself. So once you have a plant or two, it's just going to make a bunch more. Wherever you grow it, it'll come back year after year. And I use it to feed my chickens with. So pretty soon I'll start harvesting it and give it to my chickens. So friends, what I've been doing is I've been um, putting planters elsewhere, setting up new planter beds, and I needed soil. So I got them from the chicken run. So if you look, it looks like kind of fresh soil a little bit because I dug up all the yucky soil that was on the top um, that has their poo and everything and I just basically um, put it in some buckets to transfer them to my garden beds and so now the chickens are lower their soil in here is a lot lower than it used to be probably by almost a foot um, and that's good. I'm going to keep doing that to lower it another foot maybe. And what's going to happen is um, the chicken run soil will be about a foot and a half to two feet lower than the atmospheric, the surrounding soil. And when summer comes around, they're, they're going to be in a cooler spot. Just like when you have a basement, the basement's cooler than the rest of the house that's exposed to the sun directly. So the soil I'm using, I'm going to put it um, in my garden beds. First I'll put some um, cardboard, then I'll put that, that soil that's got all this stuff and a lot of weed seeds and stuff like that. And then I'm going to put water on it. And then after that I'll put another layer of cardboard and then a layer of good soil on top and then grow in the good soil and over time it'll break down all the stuff below and all of it will be good soil. You just need some fillers. Um, I also used some sunflower stalks and stuff that I had from previous years that I couldn't break down with my bare hands but after about a year or two they can um, bend and break. I have some pineapple sage that are doing fantastic so they're feeding the hummingbirds which I love and I have a bunch of things that grew here and this used to be a little fire ring that I grew things in and um, I grew a bunch of like onions and shallots in here and um, I didn't get a chance to harvest them but they're over overwintering fine so it looks like I can harvest them and if you look a lot of the stone fruit trees are barren or bare, no leaves. I'm surprised this apple tree has leaves. Um, but anyway, this this apple tree and then the apricot tree is completely bare. And then this evergreen pineapple sage is doing great. And it's most of most of my garden is in the shade right now, but um, come summertime, it'll do fantastic. And I grew everything really densely. So if you look, it's quite dense. There are many, many trees in here. And it's just so that they offer each other a little bit of protection. So over here I have my rosemary and it doesn't require very much water. So I placed it here at the edge of my garden where I don't water so much and it's also far from the house. So it's about half the size it used to be because I harvested a lot of the uh, branches and leaves, washed them, dried them, and then um, saved some for myself and gave some to family and friends. And there is my bay tree. And then next to it is my mango tree, Glen Mango. It's doing great. I was scared of it getting um, frozen. And... I was scared of my mango getting frozen and my cherry moya, but they're doing good. Oh, it's 
kind of nice to be filming and just kind of looking around and enjoying my plants. I haven't been out very much because it's been so, so cold and windy and just really, really annoying. Um, but, you know, I spent this whole morning uncovering my strawberry towers, uncovering my chili peppers that I'm trying to overwinter, and um, watering everything, fertilizing some things, just kind of going around um, doing a bunch of tasks, garden tasks, trying to keep the plants alive past this really cold season. It's, we're gonna have another windy cold day Friday, like super cold. So I have a chance to ref reflect on things and sometimes things go your way and they're fantastic and sometimes things don't go your way and it can become very, very awful. So um, two summers ago was the hottest season we had on record. Well, not really. Um, in 2017 or something like that, the temperatures were like up to 115 to 120 in Southern California. We had that day, I think it was 117 for us, something like that, degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, it was hot. My trees burnt. I thought my um, my trees were dying. My avocado tree dropped all of the avocados. They were little black fruit all over the ground. It was so sad. Um, so, but two years ago, it was quite hot. It was probably not as hot as that record-breaking one but it was quite hot and dry and um, so um, that year on the hottest weekend as well our air conditioner broke down and I don't know how my husband and children did it they just try to keep cool whatever way they could not moving keeping the fan running um, and we couldn't get someone in to fix the air conditioner f until the following week. So that whole weekend they really suffered. Um, I was at work. Um, so uh, now, of course, it's the one of the coldest winters I've ever experienced. And our something, some kind of um, thing that for the heater that provides the gas is broken um, so the flame was off or whatever and my husband went to check it out and he tried to fix a couple components however he's afraid to tur to turn the heat back on to put the fire on because he's afraid of the gas accumulating and you know us having some kind of explosion and he says he's not a heating and air conditioning expert. So if anyone knows anything, please leave me a message because, I mean, all this stuff is costing us so much money. Air conditioning, heating, the general things, and it happens at the worst times. Anyway, you guys all have to be prepared for stuff like that. If you ever own a home, it's like your second job. Well, actually marriage, children, your job, and then your home. So that's like another job. Those are your four jobs. <laughs> Hi friends. So this area right here is where my chili pepper plants were and I made a decision earlier in the year to not let them die off and to try to overwinter because I have like numerous numerous chili pepper plants here. Let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine um, 10, 11, 12. I have about 12, but three of them are just sticks, so they're not going to survive, I don't think. Let's see, but these other ones still have um, chili peppers, which I'm going to harvest, and they the they've survived through December, and it's January that's been giving us these freezing cold winds and cold cold freezing temperatures and um, so I've been it looks really messy here because I just find whatever cardboard I can find and I just throw it down here to keep the root balls warm and then I try to uh, put eggshells and whatever I can to keep the, the root balls of the peppers um, warm and some of them some of the leaves are starting to freeze 
so I don't know if it's going to be successful because um, I just wanted to save myself some time of not regrowing more chili peppers in this area and just have them continue to grow and that means that I had to sacrifice this spot right here for them and it would be a shame if they died. So I still have more chili peppers here. So I've got to harvest them. There are some more. So it looks messy, but, and at nights I had to throw a big, huge cardboard on top of it to kind of keep it warm, and including that Sterilite box there. Over here I have some mustard that are growing really, really well. I'm going to harvest it tomorrow, not today, because today we're going to harvest something else, which I will show you in a minute, but didn't that grow so well? And something was digging through my bed, so it basically dug through that bed and messed up a lot of my seedlings, killed them off. So I only have a few seedlings growing. And over here it did really well because I left the okra stalks sticking up all over and it kept whatever critter was going in there from digging around. So that was my way of taking care of things. And as you can see my beautiful basil um, just kind of froze to death. Um, all the leaves are brown now. It didn't make it. Like I said it was so cold it actually went down to freezing temperatures. Another thing that's annoying is that you can't ever get harvest because things ate my broccoli plants. So look at all those bare stems. I am so upset. Um, which is weird because they didn't touch my tatsoi. So they must not like the tatsoi. Which is great because I grew different things in the same bed. So if they don't like one thing, I have that at least. I don't know which kind of sunflowers these are or if they were acclimated to this area because um, I grew them from the seeds uh, that I grew the sunflowers here in this garden, but they're growing. <laughs> it's like January and it's so cold. So it's super annoying. I was growing the um, Napa cabbage, the really fast growing one. Um, and it was growing well, and then something's been nibbling at it, which is making me angry. And it even bit my tatsoi, which it didn't touch the other one, but it's eating this one. And my kailan, that's the little stalks in the middle there. There's practically nothing left of the kailan, which was uh, something I was looking forward to. And apparently they do not like Mizuna. And Mizuna has a very mild taste, so I like it. What a chore. I've been trying to leave, keep all my strawberries protected. So in this garden bed, well in this cement concrete mixing um, container, I've been covering it with a sterilite box. And then my um, two strawberry towers, I've been putting a bed sheet around it, wrapping it, and binder clipping it to the towers. So today friends, what we're going to do is harvest all these radishes, as you can see all the greens from it, and um, harvest any black nebula carrots in here, clean up this garden bed, and then um, I wonder if this is a parsnip or something, because I know I put those seeds in and they didn't do too well because they were kind of like old seeds, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to try to clean up this bed. As you can see, some of the nasturtiums froze. The leaves are like shrunken. So I'm going to clean up this bed and throw some new radish seeds and other things in here and grow some new crops that are fast growing or something. So I, I, I'm thinking some more carrots, some more radishes, um, some lettuce, and I I gotta go through my seeds and figure it out. So some of these are quite big. They're actually very old too. So I don't know what we're gonna get when I pull these out. Oh, look at this. It's too old. 
it was getting ready to go to seed. So I'm gonna give the leafy parts possibly to the chickens or I might just actually stir fry them. I might do that because they're really nice. So let's keep going. Okay, this is nothing. <laughs> A nothing burger. Let's see about that one. Ooh, nice. So I had one and it was quite spicy and my husband didn't like it very much and it was kind of like tough. So I read about it and it was saying that it's like old if it's if it's tough and spicy. So and it needs frequent even watering. So I did research what I had to do. So let's see how they oh this is nothing. Here's a different variety of radish. I had two kinds. One was a China Rose. And I'm not sure that lighter colored one, but I'm pretty sure this is the China Rose. Or the, sorry, um, the English Breakfast or something like that. So nothing. Guys, I didn't really pay much attention to this um, bed. So if I don't have anything, I'm not really too worried about it because I didn't come out very much because it was like cold. And I can't tolerate it that well. So what I plan on doing is, if I get a decent enough harvest, I plan on roasting them. So in this garden bed, I had some sunflowers that were growing back in November. I don't know if you recall. And there were bees all over it. So I'm guessing this is from not watering it very much, so it didn't get a chance to bulb up. Either that or it did bulb up, and then it started to want to go to seed and develop the leafy parts rather than the bulbs at the bottom. And I did overseed it in this area. I just threw a bunch of seeds in a, a row. A couple rows, in fact. Let's weed while we're here. So these are some volunteer fennel. So here are my sunflower stalks, if you can see them, and my husband broke them off to throw in the garden beds, the new garden beds at the bottom of them. So I'm just going to leave them in place. I was going to pull them out, but I'm going to leave them in place so that their roots can break down and keep the soil nice and soft. And as well, I don't want people anything digging in my soil, so the more things that stick out of it, the better. So there is the garden bed cleaned up a little bit, except for pulling out the fennel. I pulled out all the radishes, and there are the carrots, but they're so miniature. So what I'm going to do is clean up my radishes. 
here are all my radishes. I'm going to separate the roots from the leaves. Or the radishes from the leaves. <laughs> 